Good morning and welcome to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It is an important day in South Africa. It is Freedom Day and we're celebrating all kinds of freedom uh, this morning on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Now, in 1994, South Africa became a free and democratic country enshrining the values of human dignity, equality and freedom for all in the Constitution. But what does freedom mean in practice, especially when it comes to the freedom of love. Now, as we celebrate the progress we've made in South Africa, we also need to acknowledge that the fight for freedom and equality is far from over. In many African countries, people of the LGBTQ plus community are still facing discrimination and persecution with recent events in Uganda and Kenya as well, sparking outrage and concern across the world. And on the couch this morning, we are joined by Kanisida Phillips, Education Advocacy, and Gleo Boyson, a transgender woman and also a passionate activist for transgender persons, and activist Savan Lewain uh, to discuss the importance of the LGBTQI plus advocacy and representation in South Africa. This is such a big topic, and I want to thank you guys for being with us here this morning. How are we feeling on this day, celebrating Freedom Day in South Africa? Well, I would say that, you know, in South Africa, we are celebrating freedom, um, or Freedom Day at least. Um, and of course, in our legal um, landscape and frameworks, we, we have the right to celebrate. Uh, but we cannot celebrate with knowing what is happening within Uganda, yeah. within Kenya, within Zimbabwe, within Zambia. Um, and so I think really it is, it, it is a sad day. It is a day of really re-looking and reflecting on how far we've come as a continent, how far we've come and, and, and how, how we've mobilized and how we've built the movement um, towards democracy, not just in South Africa, but also in Africa. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is still a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, but here we are today to talk through uh, this very important day. Yeah, we, we look, we are making steps forward. Um, you know, we are celebrating 29 years uh, since 1994 right. on those national free and fair elections. And, you know, we are focusing on the fact that, you know, in Africa, there are still those countries where right. there's so much discrimination and difficulty. Do, what do you feel us as South Africa need to do? Do you think we should stand up and be that middle ground, that kind of voice for the rest of Africa as well? I definitely think that South Africa is, 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 is a country that has uh, very forward thinking policies and laws that accommodate a lot. Um, we need to be the pioneers in, in, in putting our foot down to say that we, we, we look at human rights and what human rights actually mean yeah. and infiltrate that over into Africa. Mm. Now, Savannah, I need to ask you as well, I've heard a conversation the other day that, you know, with the steps that, you know, we took in South Africa and we have taken some very important steps like, you know, same-sex marriage that has been legalized mm -hmm. in South Africa. But, you know, there's a lot of people still saying, you know, on paper, you know, things are still fine. Mm -hmm. You know, there it is. There's the freedom. But in practice, out there, you know, it might be different. It, how do you feel It about might, that? literally might be different. Thank you so much. Because ideolo that's just how ideology works. It looks very good on paper, but in practice and putting it out there, it's a little bit of a problem. And I must say that we are quite fortunate and privileged to live in this country, in this continent, yeah. whereby we are allowed for um, safe sa um, same sex marriages, but what about the other parts, yeah. the counterparts, my peer people that are in Kenya or, or yeah, Uganda, yeah. for instance, mm -hmm. so they are not as privileged as we are. And I'd like to believe that we still need to keep fighting, and we are still fighting. It's, it's a never-ending fight, and it's, it's going to be ending fight. continue yes. working on this, specifically with regard to the expression and freedom of love. Yes. And, and I want to ask, you know, because we do hone in on the youth and, yes. you know, we've walked this road, but there's a future ahead of us. Mm -hmm. mm. And with the work that has been doing, do you feel that maybe the, the youth within the LGBTQI plus communities take for granted the work that has been done already? What do you feel about that? So, uh, Ruan, I really believe that um, we need to, the question that we should be asking is perhaps what uh, are we as a country doing? What is, you know, our um, society doing 
to enable, to capacitate, to impart skills and knowledge in the youth of today. Because very often our youth doesn't have opportunities, doesn't have access to employment. And here we're specifically referring to um, the, the youth that identifies on the LGBTQIA spectrum. And so I think there's so many limitations for the youth that, that the question should not be if they are taking freedom for granted, but rather do they have access to, to the knowledge? Do they have access to opportunities? Do they have access to employment? Does the youth have access to health care services, sexual and reproductive health care, um, gender affirming health care for trans and gender diverse youth? Are those things made available, readily available? And we have to look at the uh, intersectionality of, of our youth um, when you are a you know, uh, when you are a, a, a youth of color, perhaps from a, from a rural background, what does that say? What does that mean for you? Do you have access? Very often we find that services are only available in the urban centers, in the city centers. We but don't how do find, you pull it into right, how do we make it accessible um, for that, that, that young person or that young, um, you know, LGBTQ person to get access to those services outside of that rural setting. Um, and so I think there's a lot that can be done to, uh, to ensure and to assist the youth to understand yeah. our, our history as a country um, and our context uh, where we come from and why Freedom Day is so important. Yeah, yeah. So that is really mm -hmm. not the question. Yeah. I, I would not want to uh, yeah. answer the question around um, if we think that the youth yeah. is taking Freedom Day for granted. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, this is a big topic and we need much more than just a couple of minutes to talk about this. But I just quickly want to ask uh, Glio Savanis, you guys, you know, but freedom of love. You know, what does it mean for you guys and, and, and what do you feel needs to still be done with regards to policy changes when you take a look at your, uh, your, 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 your traditional gender roles out there in terms of acceptance of who we are as people? I generally think just starting with a blanket marriage act. Um, to start mm -hmm. off there, um, there's already a segregation and it already says that we're not free to love whoever we want to love under the Civil, uh, civil, civil, civil mm -hmm. Act and also the, 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 the Marriage Act. Uh, it, it clearly states that it, it, these are two different, so it, it already makes it a, a different state. Mm -hmm. um, freedom to love means walking in, in, the, in the mall and just holding hands and nobody looks at you. Freedom to love means being yourself around the person and then you don't bring the baggage that that society brings to you, yeah. you bring that back home and into your relationship. And it, 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 it's a broad conversation because yeah. that is even had in the community why our relationships don't last as long because we bring the baggage that society brings on us and we bring it into our relationships mm. where we cannot work on the relationship itself. Because this is why a day like this is important to start those conversations because mm. you, you, know, you can have anything on paper, yeah. you know what I'm yes. saying? But it yes. is about the general society and that acceptance, mm. Savan, you know, mm. it's about that respect from one another as people. Mm. Because I firmly believe that if love knows no gender, um, race, colour, why should it know gender? Exactly. Yeah. So... Irrespective, I love you whether you are here, I love you right in front of me. As a human it doesn't, being. as a human being, because I see you, I don't see anything else, but I see something within you that you don't oh. see in yourself, and that's why I'm so attracted to you. You want to add something? Yeah. I would love to add something. I'm thinking around how our, you know, the queer liberation is, is, is very often equated to the, you know, same-sex le um, marriage legislation in this country. Um, and society and perhaps even the judiciary believes that that is enough you know, so you got what you what you what you wanted, what you've lobbied for, what you've advocated for, um, in terms of you know being in a, a a union with the person that you love, and so our queer liberation could not, cannot, and should not only be equated to same sex marriage. Yeah. Um, and so I think really it's important to to note that as much as the law does make provisions, there's so many limitations that um, accompany those um, those provisions that has been made. Mm -hmm. um, I can only think around um, Act 49, which um, of 2003, which is the alteration of sex description and sex status act, um, where we have so many, it, it does 
provide transgender diverse persons, you know, the, the opportunity to amend the gender markers mm. um, with the Department of Home Affairs, but we still need to produce three letters from, um, yeah. you know, from uh, medical practitioners to state mm. that th this person is who they say they are. And so I think really if we look at that, we look at um, another case in terms of um, KOS versus the Minister of Home Affairs, where um, three couples took the Department of Home Affairs to court for not um, allowing them to uh, transition or to affirm their gender as trans in a marriage, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. in a same-sex marriage, so they were forced forced to to, to get divorced. Yeah. Um, and so there are so many limitations if we think yeah. about that. Absolutely, and I, like I said, I would love to continue and, and, you know, because this is a very broad subject, but I want to thank you all for coming through and just living your best lives and going out there. Um, you know, we are all looking for just our little space of peace in our own circles. But, you know, as much as, you know, the Constitution is involved and policies mm. and all that, you know, I think it really comes down to just respect each other as human beings. That's right. You know, just see. share the love. Very That's true. what it's all about. Thank you very much uh, for being with us on Freedom Day. And as we wrap up the segment on the freedom of to love, we, we do hope that it has sparked important conversations and reflections on how we can all work towards a more inclusive and equal society. And remember, freedom is not just a right. It is a responsibility to stand up for the rights of others. And remember, please join us again uh, as, we, as we continue tomorrow to explore the many facets of freedom right here on Expressway.